channel Anupma Biology Classes. This is the second video of the reproduction series. Today we will understand about the sexual reproduction site in the flowering plants that is the flower and this video is from the embryology it means reproduction series and this is part second chapter 2 of the CBSC class 12th. So let's begin the topic. First thing we have to know that what is the flower? And you know that the sexual reproduction occurs only in the flowering plants that are the angiosperms. So for this, special organs are present in plants and that is flower. So the flower is a specialized reproductive shoot of the flowering plants consisting of a receptacle on which are inserted the necessary flower parts. In this picture you can see a complete structure of flower which we will discuss later. It arises in the exile of a small leaf-like structure called bract, the terminal part of the axis of a flower which supports all the floral appendages is called a receptacle. In this picture you can see the structure of the receptacle which is also known as thalamus or torus. The internode of the branch that lies below the receptacle is called pedicel. This is the structure of pedicel which is present below the receptacle. And the small leaf-like structure are present in the middle of the pedicel which is known as bracteole. So this is the normal structure of a flower. Now parts of the flower. And you know that in a part of a typical flower which is divided into two parts. First one is the accessory holes and second is reproductive holes. In accessory holes it is also divided into two parts. First one is the calyx and second is corolla. While the reproductive holes is also divided into two parts. First one is androsium and second is gynosium. Now we will know here the complete floral parts in brief. So the first is calyx. Calyx is the outermost hole of a floral leaves. It is the group of sepals. When calyx is colored it is called petal white and they prevent rapid transpiration from the inner parts of the flower. So, sepals are generally green in color and they are protective in function which protect the floral part in the bud condition and when the flower converted into fruit it immediately fall. Now the second accessory hole that is the corolla. Here it arrives inner to the calyx and it is a group of petals. It usually attract the insect pollinators and help in pollination. It, the petals and sepals together form the floral envelope. The floral envelope including both calyx and corolla is called perianth. So in this picture you can see a position of calyx and corolla in flower. Here the corolla are colored and in case of perianth here the calyx and corolla are not distinct. So it is known as tepals, neither sepals nor petals. Next is androsium. In this picture you can see the position of androsium and gynosium in a same flower that is in monoecious condition. Androsium is a third hole of the floral appendages that arise inner to corolla. It is a group of stamen and each stamen consists of anther and filament. Now fourth hole that is the gynosium and the floral appendages are the carpels. It consists of three distinct parts in which the first one is ovary which is the basal solen part of the carpel. Second is stigma. It is the receptive spot which loses the pollen grains and the third is a style. It is the connection between the stigma and ovary. Now this is the part of a whole flower from front and back view where sepals is green in color and petals are red in color. Here stamens that is the male reproductive part is the combination of filament and anther and the pistil that is the female reproductive part is a combination of style, stigma and ovary. Now the functions of a flower. Flowers are modified suit to perform the function of the sexual reproduction. They are in various shape to help in diverse mode of pollination. It provides seed for the germination of pollen, development of pollen tube, 
formation of gametes and fertilization. The ovary part of the carpel gets transformed into fruit and the ovules are transformed into seeds after fertilization. Some floral parts like the calyx and various modifications in ovaries help in the dispersal of fruits and seeds. So these are the main functions of the flower. Now the male reproductive part which is the stamen and also known as microsporophyll. In this picture you can see the structure of a stamen which is completely formed by the two parts. First one is the anther and second is filament and both are connected by the connective. Stamens are modified leaves concerned with the production of microspores. Each stamen consists of filaments and anther. Each lobe of anther has two pollen sacs which you can see in the picture. At maturity the two pollen sacs of the inch anther lobe fuse to form single chamber which is known as diathecus and the two lobes of diathecus anther are separated in the anterior side by a deep groove and attached on back side by the connective. There is a single vascular bundle are present in the connective. Now the development of pollen sac or microsporangia. This is the transverse section of an anther which shows different parts of anther. So a very long anther consists of actively dividing meristematic cells which is surrounded by a layer of epidermis and it becomes two lobed and each lobe develops into two pollen sacs. So there are four pollen sacs are present in one anther. A bilobed anther develops four pollen sacs which is situated at fourth kernel of the anther. Development of pollen sac begins with the differentiation of archisporial cells in the hypodermal region at the four corners of the young anther. These archisporial cells divides by periclinal divisions to give a subepidermal primary parietal layer and inner primary sporogenous layer. So, the wall layer of periphery to center consists of epidermis, endothecium, middle layer and teptum which we will see in the picture and discussed later. So here a question is what is the periclinal division? Periclinal division occurs parallel to the tissue or organ surface. So as a result we get rows of cells one over the other. Now. In this picture you can see a complete structure of the anther where the A is transversely cut anther showing pollen sac and connectives where B shows the transverse section of the young anther and C shows the transverse section of mature anther at the time of dehiscence. Here the primary parietal layer cells divides by periclinal and anticlinal divisions to form layers and these layers are the first one the red arrow indicates that is the first layer which is known as epidermis which is a single layer and become stretched at maturity. Second is endothecium which is also a single layer and poses fibrous thickenings. Third is middle layer which generate disintegrate in mature anther. Then the teptum which is may be uni, bi or multinucleate and poses dense cytoplasm and the primary sporogenous cells or layer which divides further and gives diploid sporogenous tissues. So this is the complete structure of an anther. Now microsporogenesis in the picture you can see a microsporangium and enlarged view also. It is a process in which each microspore mother cells divides meiotically to form four haploid microspores or pollen grains. During the development of microsporangium, the cells of sporogenous tissue may divide in various planes and finally separate from each other to function as microsporocytes or microspore mother cells. Here, some of the microsporocytes or microspore mother cells degenerate and provides nourishment to other and surviving microsporocytes are connected with each other by the cytoplasmic interconnections and have prominent diploid nuclei.
here each microsporocyte then develops an internal layer of callus which breaks the cytoplasmic interconnections with other microsporocytes in this picture you can see a process of the formation of a mature pollen grain here the separated microsporocytes then divide by meiosis and give rise to tetrads of haploid microspores by the process called cytokinesis which in the picture you can see after the second meiosis tetrad of four haploid microspores formed so cytokinesis results in the separation of four haploid nuclei which are arranged in the tetrad in the picture you can see usually the arrangement of microspores in a tetrad is tetrahedral or isobilateral but here there are some other shapes like decussate t shaped and linear also present so there are many type of arrangement of the microspore tetrad which you can see in the picture first is the tetrahedral second is isobilateral third is decussate fourth is t shaped and the last is linear during this the cells of septum provides nourishment to the dividing microsporocyte in angiosperms cells of the septum are of two types first one is the glandular and the second is periplasmodial so the glandular also known as secretory septum which secretes substances and finally break down at the time of pollen maturation and the periplasmodial also known as amoeboid septum which break down early by dissolution of their walls so that the septal protoplast forms multinucleate periplasmodium which provides nourishment to dividing microspore mother cells or developing microspores now the main important thing is what is the function of the septum because this is very important from the class 12's point of view Septum is responsible for the transportation of nutrients into the anther locule at the time of meiosis in its four mother cells. Here, the secretion of enzymes and hormones also occur by the septum. Production of pubis bodies, which are coated with the sporopollenin, to cause thickening of exine. Secretion of an oily material over outer side of the mature pollen, and the secretion of special proteins for the pollen to recognize compatibility. now in this picture you can see the microspore tetrad normally it separate from one anther and form and germinate in the c2 but in case of typha and drosera in the picture you can see here in the maturation state the microspore do not separate from the tetrad and form compound pollen grains here all the pollen grains are not separated they are attached to each other and the second in the picture you can see the pollinia of the calotropis this is the character of the member slpdac that is calotropis and orchidaceae that is orchids here all the microspores of an anther lobe remains united to form pollenium so what is the pollenium pollenium means coherent mass of pollen grains that is the product of each anther lobe of some flowers especially orchids here the single or paired pollenia are often attached to and carried by pollinating insects now the dehiscence of anther so this is a picture which you can see here a mature dehiscent anther and uh, you know that inside the mature pollen sac the pollen grains dry up and become powdery so because of this the septum become absorbed and the anther dries up in this picture you can see the drying proceeds further the dead cells of the endothecium contract from their outer thin walls so that the anther lobes from the longitudinal cavities this results rupture of an anther lobe walls in the region of estomium and the dispersal of the pollen grains now the sterile partition wall between the two pollen sacs of an anther lobes get destroyed forming a single chamber thus a mature bilobed anther are only two chamber one in each anther lobe here in the picture you can see this is the structure of estomium which is present at the site of dehiscent anther here from this place anther that is the pollen grains released 
in this picture you can see the types of dehiscence of anther in first transverse slit like opening in second longitudinal slit in third you can see that is podicidal where the opening via pores usually applied to the anther that shed their pollen via the terminal aperture while in the valvular dehiscence the last one here the pollen is released through a split that is positioned to the side towards each other anther and rather than towards the inside or outside of the flower so this is the type of dehiscence of anther and now in this picture you can see the types of anther on the basis of its structure that is the unilocular linear rounded sagittate sinus and appendiculate so these are the types of anther now the microspore or pollen grains these are the haploid uninucleate minute spores produced in large numbers as a result of meiosis in the microspore mother cells inside the microsporangia each pollen grains of angiosperms has two cells first one is the vegetative cell and the second is generative cells pollen grains are studied under palynology pollen grains of certain plants are highly nutritious and the certain pollen grains causes pollen allergy here the young pollen grains are converted in mature pollen after mitosis and the pollen grains also affects life of human beings they enter from our nostril and causes allergy also causes respiratory disorders asthma and bronchitis they are highly nutritious also and in this picture you can see the structure of a pollen grain which is globose in shape and consisting of two major balls in which the outer is exine composed of sporopollenin and the inner is entine which is composed of pectocellulose here exine also has two layers that is sexine which is outer side and the nexine which is inner side and this sexine is also divided into endosexine and tectum now the fate of pollen grains after their dispersal so the ultimate goal of dispersed pollen grains is to reach the specific stigma of the carpel to germinate and develop male gametophyte the viability of pollen grains differ from species to species and the scientists have developed means for storing the viable pollen grains in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade to be used as pollen banks in crop breeding programs now the development of male gametophyte so it is divided into two parts first one is the pre pollination development and the second is post pollination development in pre pollination development here the microspore is the first cell of the gametophytic generation it starts germinating in c2 such a development of male gametophyte is called proecocious so in this picture you can see the development of male gametophyte with the formation of male gametes where we see from the start that means from the a so in the first point the arrow indicates here you can see the freshly formed microspore has reached cytoplasm and centrally placed prominent nucleus so nucleus is placed centrally then prior to first mitotic division the nucleus of the microspore shifted to periphery due to the appearance of large central vacuole now in this picture you can see then the microspore nucleus starts divides mitotically into the two daughter nuclei then an oblique wall is made between them forming two unequal cells smaller generative cells and the large vegetative cells or the tube cells now a layer of callose deposited around the generative cell then the generative cell loses its contact with the wall of microspore and comes to life free in the cytoplasm and the callous layer dissolved then 
the vegetative cells has a central nuclei and starch grains lipids and proteins also present then in tine layer it starts to form pollen tube by the germ pore and gradually the vegetative tube nucleus migrate into the pollen tube and reach up to the distal end now the generative cell also migrate into the pollen tube and the generative cell divide to form two male gametes each male gamete consists of nucleus surrounded by a thin sheet of cytoplasm so this is the complete development of the male gametophyte with the formation of male gametes now the second that is the post pollination development in this picture you can see the post pollination development on the stigma the liberated pollen grains are transferred to the receptive surface of the carpel by the process called pollination on this stigma the pollen grains absorb the water and swells within a few minutes here the vegetative cells enlarges and comes out through one of the aperture in the form of a pollen tube so the pollen tube forms between the cells of a stigma and transmitting tissues of the style and the tube secretes exogenous pectinases and other hydrolytic enzymes to create passage for its entry so this is the complete view of the microsporogenesis and the microgametogenesis here microsporocyte forms the microspore which develops into a unicellular pollen and the bicellular pollen then the tricellular pollen after this it is converted into a germinated pollen this germinated pollen after the formation of the new structures then it forms the microsporocyte and the process continues that means it starts from the microsporocyte formations to the germinated pollen now the next that is the female gametophyte that is the carpel also known as the megasporophyll carpel is a modified leaf bearing ovules on the margin it is born laterally on the receptacle and a typical carpel consists of a hollow vessel swollen ovary an elongated style and a terminal stigma so in the picture you can see stigma is a receptive spot of the carpel where the pollen grains get lost during pollination and ovary is important for the for the bearing of the ovule now the first that is the structure of the ovule so this is the picture each ovule consists of a nucleus invested by one or two integuments a stalk by which it is attached to the placenta of the ovary various parts of the ovules are funiculus hilum raphe nucleus embryo sac integuments micropyle and chalaza so we will start from the first that is the funicle so what is the funicle funicle is a stalk like structure and attaches the ovule to the placenta second is hilum which is the point of attachment of the body of the ovule with the funiculus next is micropyle which is the narrow pore formed by the projection of the integuments through which the pollen tube enters into ovule next nucleus which is the mass of parenchymatous tissue surrounded by the integuments it encloses embryo sac and provides nourishment to the developing embryo then integument these are the outer covering of the ovule which provides the protection to the developing embryo and next is raphe which is formed by the synthesis fusion of lengthwise fusion of funiculus with the body of the ovule and here you can see the chalaza it is the place of origin of integument and the next is embryo sac it is the female gametophyte which contains egg apparatus antipodal cells and secondary nucleus so this is the complete structure of the ovule now the types of ovule in which the first one is orthotropous ovule so what is the orthotropous ovule 
In this, the ovule is erect and devoid of any curvature with the micropyle distal and directed away from the placenta, like in case of the polygonum. And here, the embryo and ovule is straight. Next is anatropous ovule. In this, the ovule is completely inverted in its orientation and here, approx 180 degree curvature of the funiculus like in case of the helianthus. Next is amphitropous ovule. Here, the body of ovule shows prominent curvature and almost becomes horseshoe shaped. And here, the embryo sac is also curved like capsula. Next is campylotrophus. Here, the body of the ovule become curved so that the micropyle and chalaja come to lie on either side of the funicle. And the embryo sac is more or less straight like here you can see in the mustard. Next is Sarcinotropus ovule. Here the ovule is straight with micropyle facing upwards like opuntia. And the next last is Hemitropus ovule which is here the body of the ovule is twisted only halfway so that the degree of curvature is intermediate between the orthotropus and anatropus like ranunculus. So this is the complete six types of ovule are found in case of the angiosperms. Now the mega sporogenesis and the development of female gametophyte. So formation of mega spores from the mega spore mother cell is called mega sporogenesis. It occurs inside the nucleus of the developing ovule of the angiosperms and the process begins very early when the nucleus is not completely surrounded by the integument. So see in the picture here the arrow indicates first of all a single cell archisporium differentiated into internal cells of the nucleus near the micropillar end. Then it forms primary parietal and sporogenous cells and this sporogenous cell behaves as megaspore mother cell. Now the megaspore mother cell divides by meiosis to form tetrad of four megaspores. So in this picture you can see clearly the linear tetrad of four megaspores and in case of a monosporic type of development of the embryo sac only one mega spore situated towards the larger end and remains functional. The remaining three mega spores gradually degenerate and finally disappear. So the functional mega spore is present at the chalagel end. Now this functional haploid mega spores enlarges in size and by means of three successive mitotic divisions form give rise to eight nucleate embryo sac which you can see in the last picture that is the eight nucleate stage in first the mitotic divisions forms two nuclei which moves to the poles of the embryo sac then it divides to form two then four it means of eight nucleate stage four on both the ends. Out of the four nuclei at the micropillar end, three forms egg apparatus which is remaining one that is the present in the center and the chalazal end here also the three out of four forms the antipodal cells and the two remainings that is one from the chalazal end and one from the micropillar end come in center and forms a polar nuclei which then fused to form the secondary nucleus which you can see in the last picture. So in the last picture the egg apparatus present which is composed of egg cell and two synergids and the antipodal cells is composed of three antipodal cells and in the center secondary nucleus is present. So this is the complete mega sporogenesis. Now, the structure of monosporic polygonum type of embryo sac, which you can see in the picture. 
Here, a fully developed typical or polygonum type of embryo sac is large and oval structure consisting of seven cells, in which first is the single cell or U sphere. In the picture, you can see that is the egg cell. Second is two synergids, then three antipodals, and the last that is single large central cell. So. The central cell contains two polar nuclei which fuse to form diploid secondary nucleus. During fertilization, one male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus to form triploid nucleus. After fertilization, the central cell develops into the endosperm. So this is the complete structure of the monosporic that is the polygonum type of embryo sac. Now pollination. Here we can see the attachment of the male gametophyte to the female gametophyte. The transfer of pollen grains from the open anther of the stamen to the receptive stigma of the carpel is called pollination. So here are the types of pollination. Here there are two types of pollination. First one is the self-pollination and the second is cross-pollination. In self-pollination, the pollen grains form pollen grains and the is, uh, is uh, that means stamen and the pistil form in the same flower while in the cross pollination it occurs between the two flowers two different flowers that means separate flowers now the first that is the self pollination self pollination involves the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or genetically similar flower it is of two types in which the first one is autogamy Autogamy is a kind of pollination in which the pollen from the anthers of a flower are transferred to the stigma of the same flower and it occurs by the three methods in which the first one is clistogamy. Here some plants never open to ensure complete self pollination like in oxalis and viola. So the clistogamous flower are bisexual, is small, inconspicuous colorless and do not secrete nectar. Second is homogamy. Here the anthers and stigma of the bisexual flowers of the same plants mature at the same time like the mirabilis, potato, sunflower etc. Third is bird, bird pollination. Here the anthers and stigma of the bisexual flowers of the same plant mature before the opening of the buds to ensure self-pollination like in case of wheat, rice, pea etc. which you can see in the picture. Now the second self-pollination that is the gaitanogamy. Gaitanogamy is the where the pollen from the anther of one flower are transferred to the stigma of another flower which born on the same plant. So what are the advantages of the self-pollination? Here the chances of pollination are more. Self pollination maintains purity of the rays and avoids mixing. It needs not to produce a large number of pollen grains. Now the disadvantage of the self pollination. So there are some disadvantage also in case of the self pollination in which here the progeny continuously gets weaker after every generation and the less chances of the production of new species and varieties. So these are the advantage. Now what are the contrivances to ensure self-pollination? So by this for the self-pollination first one is the bisexuality and homogamy. If the flowers are bisexual and both the sexes mature at the same time it ensures self-pollination. Second is clistogamy. In some cases, flowers are bisexual and clistogamous. That means they remain closed. So for this, they will show the self-pollination, not never cross-pollination. And the last is bud pollination because the pollination occurs in bud condition before the opening of the flower. That means anthesis condition. So this also ensures the self-pollination. So these three are the contrivances to ensure self-pollination. Now, here you can see the pollination is of two types. First one is the self-pollination and second is cross-pollination. Now, this self-pollination is divided into two parts. That means subtypes, autogamy and gaitonogamy. 
and the cross pollination is divided into one part that is the xenogamy or the cross pollination also known as xenogamy now the second that is the cross pollination which you can see in the picture it involves the transfer of pollen grains from the flower of one plant to the stigma of the flower of another plant it also called xenogamy or allogamy the main floral characteristic which facilitate cross pollination are first that is the hercogamy why the cross pollination occur so there are some facilitate facilities in case of the cross pollination in which the first one is the hercogamy so here the flower poses some mechanical barrier on their stigmatic surface to avoid self pollination so they will show the cross pollination next is dicogamy here the pollen and stigma of the flower mature at different time to avoid self pollination next is self incompatibility in some plants the mature pollen fall on the receptive stigma of the same flower but fail to bring about self pollination next male sterility when the pollen grains of some plants are not functional so it shows cross pollinations next dioism here the cross pollination always occur when the plants are unisexual and dioecious it means male and flower flowers occur on the separate plants like the papaya some cucurbits etc in this case cross pollination occur and the last that is the heterostyly here the flowers of the same plants have different length of stamens and styles so that self pollination is not possible like in the primula linum etc so there are many vectors for the class pollination and for this you know that is divided into the two groups first one is the abiotic factors or vectors or agents and the second is biotic agents in case of the abiotic the, as you know that that is wind current gravity water the process of pollination which occur by the abiotic factors and if biotic that means animals are responsible for the cross pollination in which the first one is an anemophily that means wind pollination so it is a mode of pollination or transfer of pollen grains from the anther to stigma through the agency of wind and the examples are here you can see that is the grasses sugarcane bamboo coconut palm date palm cannabis mage etc so there are some characteristics for the wind pollinations here the flowers are small colorless inconspicuous odorless and the nectarless here the calyx and corolla are either reduced or absent and the anthers are usually versatile when flowers are unisexual male flowers are more abundant than female flowers so in bisexual flowers the stamens are generally numerous and in case main thing in case of the wind pollination is that the pollen grains are small light dry dusty and sometimes winged so that they are easily blown away to long distance up to 1300 kilometers and the flowers are well exposed in case of the air so they shows the wind pollination now the next that is the hydrophily or water pollination it is the mode of pollination or the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to stigma through the agencies of water and the examples are valisneria joustera ceratophyllum hydrilla etc so there are some characteristic in case of hydrophily also like in case of the hydrophily flowers are small colorless inconspicuous odorless and nectarless also as like the wind pollination here the calyx corolla and other floral parts are unwettable pollen grains and stigma are generally unwettable and the stigmas are long and sticky so in this picture it is a picture of valisneria which is a submerged fresh water hydrophyte and it is dioecious plant here the male flower born male plant and the female flowers are born on the female plant so here the mature male flowers are absized from the spadix and float on the surface of water and the mature female flowers also float on the water surface but remains attached to the female plants with the help of long stalk 
so the pollination occurs on the surface of water and after fertilization the female flowers are pulled down inside the water by the coiling of the flower stalk so it shows the hydrophily that means water pollination now the entomophily or the insect pollination here the transfer of pollen grains to the stigma through the agencies of insects and the examples are moth flies butterfly wasp bees beetles etc so there are some characteristic in case of the insect pollination here the flowers are usually large conspicuous bright colored and so it to attract insect pollinators usually the petals of entomophilus flowers are large and attractive small flowers bloom in bunches to attract the insects and the pollen grains of certain flowers are edible many insect visit these flowers to eat their pollens or to carry them for their brood of larvae now there are different types of entomophily in this picture you can see the pollination in the case of salvia here you can see the lower lip provides platform for the visiting insects and the upper lip is just like a hood which protects the floral organs the flowers are protenderous and each flower has the two epipetalous stamens located anterior lateral in position now here the each stamen has a short filament and an elongated curved connective the anther has two parts one half is sterile and the other half is fertile both the parts of anther are separated apart due to elongation of connective and the elongated connective has two unequal arms the two upper arms is long and curved it bears the fertile lobe of anther so the lower arm of the connective is short and bears the sterile lobe of anther so in this type of case when the pollen dusted bees visit older flower its back rubs against the mature stigma bringing about the pollination so this is the pollination in case of the salvia now the pollination in yucca and this is a obligatory symbiotic relationships between a yucca and a insect pollinator that is the tegeticula here the female moth visit the pendulous white flowers at night first of all it collects pollen grains and from anthers in the form of a ball then it inserts its ovipositor into the ovary of the flower and deposits the egg after deposition of egg it climbs to the top of the style and pushed the pollen ball into the hollow of stigma to bring about pollination next is pollination in case of the orchids and in case of the orchids here they have a very strange relationship with the insect pollinator the orchids bear flowers which resemble the female wasp in the color odor and appearance same so the male of wasp matures first and leaves the burrow about 4 weeks before the female comes out for the open air mating the unexperienced males try to pseudo copulate the orchid flowers and presuming them as their female partners and bring about pollination so this is a very different type of strange type of relationship and next is the pollination in ficus that means fig here the wasp pollinator blastophaga to affect pollination here the inflorescence that is hypothyrium is closed from all the sides except an apical narrow opening through which the wasp enters into it the wasp lay their egg inside the hypanthodium where the young ones feed upon the gall flower as the wasp comes out of the hypanthodium they drop the pollen of male flowers situated near the oophyte on the female flower located at the base to effect pollination so these are some types of entomophily that means insect pollination now ornithophily that means pollination by birds here the mode of pollination by birds and the examples are sunbird hummingbird crow bulbul parrot manna etc here the bird can drive about half of its body weight of nectar in a single day and the nectar is chiefly made of sugar and provides a sweet drink to the bird 
In case of ornithophilus flowers, there are some characteristics like the flowers are usually large in size, they have tubular or funnel shaped corollas. The flowers are brightly colored which attract the birds for the long distance. The flowers produce abundant watery nectar and they are usually scentless. Next is chiropterophily that means bat pollination. It is a mode of pollination performed by bats and the bats are nocturnal flying mammals which move swiftly and transport pollen grains to long distance sometimes over 30 kilometers. Here the flowers they visit are large dull colored as you can see in the picture and have a strong scent. Now the advantage of cross pollination. So in case of the cross pollination it brings about genetic recombination and production of new varieties. It results in healthy and strong offsprings due to phenomena of hybrid vigor. Variations caused due to cross pollination may result in the production of disease resistant plants. It results in the production of seeds in self sterile plants. And the disadvantages also of the cross pollination in which the first one is it is not economical. The plant wastes lots of energy and food material in unnecessary adaptations and devices to bring about pollination. It is uncertain because a factor of chances is always involved. It involves addition of some undesirable characters or loss of some important characters. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of the cross pollination. Now the outbreeding devices to ensure cross pollination in which the first one is unisexuality or dicleaning. Flowers are unisexual or dicleaners so the self pollination is not possible in this case so they shows the cross pollination. Second is dichogamy. The plants are bisexual flowers however anther and stigmas mature at different times to avoid self pollination in which it is of two types. First one is a protendry and second is protogyny as you can see in the picture. In case of protendry, the anthers mature earlier than stigma of the same flower like the salvia, sunflower, rose, etc. And in case of protogyny, stigma matures earlier than anthers of the same flower like the mirablis, gloriosa, plantogo, etc. So according to the name, it's clear that proto that means before, okay? And endry means male reproductive organ and gyne means female reproductive organ. Now the self sterility or self incompatibility. Here the pollen grains of a flower are incapable of germinating on the stigma of the same flower due to the presence of similar self sterile genes. And the examples are like the potato, tobacco, crucifers etc. Next is prepotency. Pollen grains of a different flower germinate more rapidly over the stigma than the pollen grains of the same flower. So it shows the prepotency and the examples are the apple, grapes etc. Next is heterostyly. In this case there are certain plants. There are two or three types of flowers with different heights of styles and stamens. So they are known as the heterostyly. So in both pictures you can see the first one is long style and the short stamen. This is known as pin eyed. And the second is short style and long stamen which is known as thrum eyed which is sown in jasmine, primrose etc. Next is hercogamy which is last and here the mechanical device prevent cell fertilization and favor cross pollination even in homogamous flower. So, extrosis dehiscence of anther in the picture you can see this is the picture of Calotropis and uh, in case of many orchids also pollen grains occurs in sac and this sac is known as pollinia which we discussed earlier and here the two adjacent pollinia are attached to form a translator which can be lifted by insects only. So, this is the end of the video and here you get knowledge related to sex organs 
of the flower that is stamen and the carpel and the type of pollination now the next video will be on the fertilization in the flowering plants so if you like this video then please like and share it and subscribe to my channel anupma biology classes if you have any questions any queries or any suggestions you can ask in the comment section below thank you for the watching